buy Ricom and other products, but how do we translate this to, to the, the, the physical world, to the persons that are working on the point of sales? How to train them on pairs of products that can make a cell better and that can make the satisfaction even better because the customer says, yes, it fits well, maybe I buy it, and they may recommend that, right? Okay, so after 8 million questions answered in our system, with more than 100 customers and more than 35,000 players, I want to share some stats, some amazing stats about how they are using this. Well, first, customers use in two different ways. The first one is that they use in events. Events like this at the end of the event, or events like sales events, or kickoffs events, or things like this, at the end of the event, during 40 minutes, they play on the same room. We project on real time on the projector the competition. They fight between themselves, they challenge themselves like crazy. And then we, we give them some awards. This is a first use. Even with classroom, we can make the same with classroom. And the other use is they, they, they use in a kind of five days games where people play wherever they are. So maybe working, maybe at home, maybe waiting for a customer, whatever, during, during all the day, during five days in this case. So what are the facts? Well, I, I, I prepared something a little bit strange, which, is, which I call trivia presentation, where we will have a question, like a trivia, we will have three answers, and I need the help of the audience to see which is the best answer, and in these ways we will see which is the, the right fact in this case. So I won't ask you to use any device like a phone or a power boat, just a human incorporated device, which is the arm and the app on the hand, just to tell me what you think, okay? So, do players play at work or at home? Or at home? How much people think that 80% at work hours? Raise the hand. Hmm, okay. And um, how much think that is 80% but outside work hours? More or less the same. And how much thing is 60% outside work hours? More. Okay, let's see. It's 80%. It's amazing. Yes, it's amazing. That amazes us too because for retail even, they have a statistic for all the retail business that work with us, they have a statistic that is 95%. When we join the statistics with pharma industry, when people play where they, are work, where they are waiting for a customer sitting down, we consider this work time maybe at, at 1 or at 12, and, and, and these statistics decreases a little bit, because if not it will be higher. 80% play outside work hours. Why? Because, yes, it's learning, but on the other hand, they, it's perceived as a game. Okay, next question. Which is the most played hour? So let's read it. At 11 p.m.? at 9 p.m. or 7 a.m. So, who thinks it's 11 p.m.? Oh, a lot. <laughs> I see the pattern, I think. So, at 9 p.m., a lot too, that's great. And at 7 a.m., less. Let's see, okay, it's 11. That's great, 11. So they play at 11 at 9, that's crazy. Yes, and this is the pattern. This is the common pattern we see in all our games, no matter the country. No matter the country. Yes, we have a lot of customers in Spain, but we have customers also in US, and in France, in Emirates, also in Hungarian too. So, the breakfast, people play on the breakfast, people play on the lunch, people play at 11, and the second hour most played is between 12 and 1. That's crazy. <laughs> So, another question. Which is the average knowledge increase in a five days game? So what I mean is, the first game I play, I have unknown questions there. Well, maybe I have trained some material before, but the questions were unknown for me. So I have a getting right ratio, whatever. That ratio increases by something during the five days because questions get repeated. So people start memorizing the answers, right? So. Who thinks it's 30% the increase in five days? Just one, one okay, small number. 50%, a lot. And 25? Okay, so you think that the pattern is always the best answer, right? Not in this case, 
is 30%. It's not always the best answer, right? So 30%, which is a lot because we see this pattern. So the first day, usually, they have a getting right ratio of 60% the first day. And in all our games, on average, we end with 90%, which is great. So it's 60% of increase of memorization, if you want. Okay, another question. Uh, that's that's a, a good one. On average, how much time does a player spend in a five days game? So how much they are engaged? 100, 150, and 300 minutes. Who thinks is 100 minutes? <laughs> okay, more number. 150. More? That's two hours and a half, right? And 300. Okay, so it's the middle. It's 150. So they play two hours and a half during a five days game, which is not bad on average, right? And during those hours, they play minute by minute, by the way, because challenging, it's just spending a minute. So during those two hours and a half, how many questions a corporate player, usually is a corporate player, does answer during a five days game? So who thinks is 300 questions? Who thinks is 500? More? 800? Yes, it's 800. That's a lot. That's a lot. In fact, we have a world record, and, and we, we track this. So, when we started May last year, there was a guy that answered not 800, that answered 1,200. We said, wow, that's a lot. Okay. But then, on September, we had a guy that answered 4,000, almost 5,000 questions during five days, right? Then, on January, we have a little bit more, on June more, but last October, there was a guy, <laughs> that's incredible, I think he played for 20 hours during those five days, it was incredible. So, usually we ask for a five days game to upload 250 questions, and just then start repeating those questions, right? So there is a balance between the number of days that last the game and the number of questions. So this guy churned the questions 40 times, okay? So it has, I bet that it has a 99.9% .9 of getting right. Okay, so, but how many players play on a voluntary game? And, and, and by voluntary I mean that, okay, if I have a sales force for 100 uh, employees and I am close to that sales force and I say, look, uh, I pay the mobile phone, I pay um, the, the data, and um, I want you to train, so please train. That's a mandatory game, right? And we have these this games too, so they play around 100%, right? But sometimes we need to train 7,000 bank employees like two weeks ago we did, and we, don't, we cannot make them, you, you, you need to play, it's mandatory, it's optional. Or we need, to, we need to make, we need to train maybe shop assistants from a retailer, and the shop assistant doesn't have a mobile paid by the company. So they need to put their own mobile, their own data, at the service of the game, at the service of playing, right? So that's an important, how many people plays in that situation? How many people we enroll, right? So, 33 to 50%, 80 to 100%, or 50 to 80%. Who thinks is 33 to 50%? Some. Who thinks is 80 to 100%? <laughs> Some. And who thinks, oh, it's 50, oh, sorry. But it's, it's great, it's a great number, yes? It's a great number, it's good. So, between 50 and 80, so it depends on the culture of the company. We have some great customers that have an internal culture that is close to the people, to the shop assistants, whatever, there is a lot of factors that they, they've got even 85%, and, and the average is, is close to 50, right? Okay, and then, which is the most common use? So, for what our customers use most the system? What kind of content they create? 
product launches, so before a product launch, they create content for all the things that needs to be known before the product launch, kickoff and sales events, or cross-selling training. Who thinks is cross-selling training? Some. Who thinks is kickoff and sales events? Some. Who thinks is product launches? A lot. But it's kickoff and sales events. Why this happen? This happens because it happens more kickoffs and sales events than product launches, usually, right? Because a company launches, let's say, two, three products or one in a year, some companies, but, but they, they have a lot of meetings, right? So this is what they do a lot of times. So by the way, our system is most used in sales for uh, sales meetings, as I said, for product training, for cross-selling, for channel training, and this is really interesting. So we have a direct force, we, we can manage them closely. But what happens to the channel? <coughs> it is far from us. We need to go, if we want to train them through the middle management of the, of the channel owner, the distributor owner, you know, and it's difficult to reach every employee on the channel, right? So imagine that we, we create a game where they play with the mobile phone and we have a direct relationship with all the employees that work with the channel. So they, they, we have a lot of customers using channel training and using the trivia system for this. Then marketing, new product launches of course, campaigns, um, trends, new things in fashion can be trained by the shop assistants and they will have more knowledge about new trends and when a customer's approach, they can talk about that too, which is great. Then consumer engagement. This is huge. I talk about employee engagement, about how to use this with employees, but with customers, we can create private games just with the content that is appealing to a customer. For instance, IKEA. IKEA sends a catalog, a, a big catalog with all the furnitures. So imagine creating a, a game around the catalog for all the IKEA fans. So at the time that, 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 that people are playing, watching products and watching questions about products, sales increase because they are just watching things that they may buy, right? Or may recommend. And then other use, the final use is HR and support, kickoffs, communication of new plans and tactics and strategies. And then boring things like safety, regulations, all those sort of things. The last question. The last question. So we said that we use this for events. And people play at the end of an event. Usually events may last one day, two or three days. And imagine that at the end of the event, you make people play, right? So, during four minutes game, which is the time that we usually use on an event, what do you think? They answer 150 questions, 90 questions, or 50 questions. Who thinks is 50 questions? Okay? Who thinks is 90 questions? A little bit more. And who thinks is 150 questions? More. Yeah! It's 150, which is a lot, because imagine that you don't do this, this as a game, you just have paper, and you say, look, it's 7 p.m., you are tired, and I want you to answer 150 questions in paper. So they say, no way, we are tired, uh, we don't want to do it, uh, you are crazy, right? But in a game, in just a 40 minutes game, what happens is that the game stops, and people say, oh, wow, I want to continue playing. This is real game behavior. Okay, thanks. 